Good morning. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Lorene. Today I'm talking to you about an annual event that I just really, really enjoy going to. I have a group of lady friends and we've been meeting for about 20 years and every sort of just before Christmas we get together and we have a lunch and um, we bring like little gifts to exchange, nothing, nothing amazing. Although someone is a really good baker, so that's always yummy. Um, and then we also bring books that we have purchased over the year or books that we have on our bookshelves. And w these books get exchanged, but they, they do go back to the owners eventually. And so what happens is um, all the books get book talked and then put onto the floor or and the tables and so on. And, and so if I bring about eight books, then as I talk about them, you know, they go on the floor like, like cards. And then the next person will talk up their books and they go on the floor or the tables. And by the time we're finished, um, there's probably, I, don't, I would say there can be some years up as many as 30 books on the floor if not more <laughs> and, and while the book talks are going on you're looking at the covers of all these books and trying to remember, oh yeah I want that one oh yeah I want that one oh yeah I want that one and so then we all very politely wait till everyone's done and in when we were younger we would sort of you know like arm wrestle for books but <laughs> Now that we've all got bones that could break, <laughs> we're a little more polite and we'll say something like, oh, I would really like such a book and someone else, well, yeah, I would like that one too. Okay, well, um, how about if you get it and um, I'll get it from you later. And so eventually you accrue a pile of books. And this is the pile of books that I was able to get this year. Oh, do do do. I think it's my smallest pile yet, just six. And, uh, oh, that one's backwards. Anyhow, um, six books. Quite often I will go with 10, 12 or more books and, uh, you know, come back with all the ones that nobody wanted, plus an additional eight, 10, 15 books that I have hogged off the floor. But as I say, we're way more polite these days than we used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and not only do I come back with that many books, but I have also bargained with other people and said, oh, when you're finished with that one, she's going to get it and then I would like to see it. And so over the course of the year, um, what used to happen is we would gather around in different people's homes every Wednesday morning and the books would slowly be coming back and as you would say oh I'm finished with I'm finished with this book and it would go to the center of the table and then anyone else who wanted to read that book would say okay I'm going to take it next and eventually the books all come back to their owner every once in a while there's a book that causes great confusion because someone will say oh I don't want that book just you know just put it in the donations pile when uh, when you're finished with it so we'll all you know someone will receive the book back four or five times and, until finally we grasp that that book is supposed to be put in the donations pile somewhere. So it's kind of fun, keeps us laughing all year round. And I have been known to hang on to books till right up to the, it takes me as much as 12 months to get through that pile, that pile of uh, books. Um, and plus, as I say, I quite often have eyeballed books in other people's stashes. So, um, I'm, I'm kind of bad for just having eyes way too big for my stomach. Uh, this year, as I say, it was a very small list uh, pile because a lot of us weren't buying books. None of us purchased from Amazon. We all purchased from uh, local bookstores. Um, and I mean, we did our best to support local bookstores, but there was also just not as much impulse buying because quite often when we go into the bookstore right behind where you pay the cash um, are the new releases in fiction and non-fiction and then just down one shelf are the uh, new releases new releases in paperback and this is a really well curated bookstore it's called bookmark and it's on um, the main spring garden road of halifax and there's another one in uh, charlottetown 
And the group here just do a brilliant job of curating the books. And so uh, there are the occasional, you know, bestseller books, but not really. It's more more prize winning books or more um, they know that they've got a lot of people that like to read Japanese mysteries or so they, they cater to their reading crowd more than um, a, a chapters or an indigo would. So anyhow, the impulse buying was definitely down this year. And most of us were buying books that were very self uh, centric in that I didn't buy anything that I um, thought other people would want to read. Because I do do that on occasion going, oh, I think the whole group would like this book and, and buy one of those. But I did those from the library because I don't know, I just, I mean, it was the same amount of money in my wallet. I just somehow felt like I needed to save money. So, well, anyhow, what I have this year um, are six really good books I'm excited about. This one was on my TBR for quite a while and it just happened to be there in physical form. Ben Aranovich is Rivers of London, and this is a series. It starts off with a human detective, and I, I can't remember now if it's the witness or his partner who's a ghost. So it's a bit magical, it's a bit surreal, it's a bit, you know, fooling around. So I'm up for a bit of fooling around. I'm looking forward to this one. This one I picked entirely on the basis of the cover. I rarely do that. I don't even really know what it's about. Daisy Johnson writes everything under, and the main character is Gretel, and um, she's had some kind of uh, peculiar childhood on a, ca on a canal boat, and it's supposed to be a classical myth turned on its head, but that's all I know, so I hope it pays off. This one, I was told, Gap Creek by Robert Morgan, is just a sweet, quiet book. And uh, that's always nice to have sort of back in the background for those days where you just, uh-oh. So this is about a woman, what's her name, Julia, Julie, who lives in a place called Gap Creek and she marries a person who's got a farm. It's very rural, they're working very hard. It's kind of a family, not a family saga because I think it just, it's just her point of view. I don't think it goes too much into her past and, the next generation but yeah so I really have no idea what we're in for on this one Oprah's Club um, okay this one I have no idea what I'm getting into except that the lady who recommended it just kept saying I'm sure you want this one Kristen Lavin's daughter by Sigrid Unstedt and Sigrid Unstedt was, is the winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature somewhere in the past this is actually three three books in one. So it's not quite as mental as it looks. And this is an epic story about uh, Kristen and her life. She starts off when she's about eight years old and goes on through all of her life in Norway until she dies. And that's all I know. <laughs> so, um, I, but I was warned that this book is one that you should not be reading lots of other books at the same time. That this is a, a focus on it book because um, I guess it's, it's, it's fairly intense and there's a lot of different names. And so I'm wondering if I shouldn't write a little, like keep a track. Sometimes, you know, you, you don't know who the characters are and you, especially after th three years, um, there's a map. No, there is not, uh, uh, there's not a tree of characters. So I may, I may do that just to help myself out. Right, the last one I picked up was kind of uh, um, a book that I thought both Steve and I would like, Late Nights on Air by Elizabeth Hay. Um, it is taking place in the Yukon in Canada. A bunch of people have decided that they are going to follow the trail of Englishman John Hornby who with his small party starved to death in the Barrens in 1927. Uh, it also has stuff with uh, about the Mackenzie Valley gas pipeline, which may not have, it may not have much resonance for people who aren't Canadian, but that pipeline has definitely been in uh, Canadian news over the years and remains so. So it's kind of an adventure tale. It's kind of um, a growth uh, story and um, I think 
you know, I'm trying to read more and more Canadian literature whenever I can, so I'm looking forward to that. So these books, as I say, can take me months to read, and I try to do a quick job of the ones that other people have said I'd like to read that one. So I don't remember what that was. <laughs> They'll have to tell me again. <laughs> okay, the other books that I had on my game plan for December, I'm actually doing not too badly. I had about about four books that I was hoping to read from the 1st to the 10th and one of them I didn't finish it was terrible and another one was for my book club so I may speak about that next week when I hear what they have to say about it it was War Cross um, I personally didn't love it but um, I think it's right up a few people's alleys and so you've got to support different kinds of choices um, and I'm reading two others one is Pax by Sarah, Pe Sarah Pennypacker, and she has a follow-up to this one, um, Pax Survives or something like that. I've been told the second book is very sad, and it's about a boy who has been told that he must release his pet fox into the wilds. Dad's going off to war. I don't know which one, but there are televisions, so it must be a contemporary war. And he has to go and live with his grandpa while dad's away. And uh, the boy realizes that it was just absolutely the wrong choice for him personally to uh, let this fox go. But the adults in his life are like, yeah, you know, that's just what you do. So he's decided to run away from grandpa's. And I'm only on page 25. So um, and I'm, anyways, it's, it's a good one. It's a quick one. I've been reading it at bedtime. And the other one I'm reading, which is... Um, Nope, not, I'm not reading that one, but it looks the same. Where'd it go? It's not here. It's called The New Magdalene uh, by Dorothy Wilkie Collins. And um, it's a, I did mention it last time. It's about stolen identity in the 1870s, and I am enjoying it. It is definitely uh, a book of its times in that nobody in British upper-class society ever says, pass me the tea. They all say things like, uh, I hear the de Jarling is doing well this year, and the, which is supposed to mean pass me the tea. Ugh. My next round of books, okay, we're on the 14th. Okay, so I'm not doing too bad. My next round of books I'm hoping to read in the teens is The uh, Stolen Prince of Cloudburst. And yeah, finish, finish those other two. So then in the 20s, I have this one earmarked for Christmas. I can't wait. It's the third one in the Nevermore series with uh, Morgan Crow, who's the main protagonist. And I'm sure those of you who love middle book, magic, adventure, um, coming, of, coming of power type stories will know all about this. And if you don't, seriously look it up. Jessica Townsend and the first one Oh, they've put, gone and put a sticker over the, the title. Sorry. Oh my goodness. I don't, I hate when they do that. It's like, I just basically don't like stickers on the books. The first one is uh, Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. The second one is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow. And this one is Holopox. And I believe there's another one coming out in 2022 uh, called, um, I think, Silver Pox, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I won't get it until it's in paperback. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's for Christmas. And then these two books, I'm hoping to take me out of the year. The Feast by Margaret Kennedy and European Travels for the Monstrous Gentlewoman by... Theodora Goss, which is the second in the um, series of, um, oh my goodness, The Strange Adventures, The Strange Adventures. <laughs> well, somebody had a lot of a strange case of the alchemist's daughter. That's right. There's where we want to go. So again, if I really liked book one, I felt that it was a bit slow in the middle and I didn't love the solution to the mystery. It was a bit of an open-ended uh, 
clo uh, the closing was open-ended, which is how we get to this book. And I've been told that it is a bit of a slow book as well. Um, through the, I guess the whole book is slow. Probably the consensus seemed to be it could have used about 200 pages taken out. But I liked the book, the first book, well enough that I'm going to give this one a good shot and see. Um, and besides, it's between Christmas and New Year's. There's nothing going on. What am I, what am I going to be doing? <laughs> Especially if COVID is going the way COVID is going. We'll probably be locked down again. So who cares? Um, that's it for me today. I hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true. And I should be back next week with... Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not planning things. I'm just going spontaneously. So if there's anything you'd like me to talk about before the year is over, just shoot me a message in the doobly-doo below and um, I'll see what I can do about it. So bye-bye for now.